What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-host, Leah Matthews. How are you doing, Leah? Hi, Chief. I'm doing great. Ready to oh. get it going. How about you? Ready you ready to get it going? Got it. I am. Awesome, awesome. And we got a special co-host today from the Coast Guard Exchange, uh, Chief Petty Officer Christina Redmond. How are you doing? Great. How are you? How is everybody doing today? Oh, we're, we're doing wonderful, wonderful. Uh, how, where are you calling in from? Let the, let the folks know where you're at. I'm in Chesapeake, Virginia. Chesapeake. How's the weather out there? Cold. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh. I can tell. Cold, sorry. <laughs> so uh, we got an awesome, we got a, you know, awesome guest today. We have uh, two guests. We got a father and daughter duo. So, uh, and for me, it's always amazing to, for me to see, uh, like, you always want your kids to do better than you in, in life in general, right? And so it's amazing to see your kids kind of following your footsteps and doing something that's way bigger than themselves individually. Uh, but this young lady put those words into action and actually saved lives while doing so. So, uh, and we get to a chance to hear her story today. So without further ado, Leah, please introduce today's guest. Chief, yes, sir. Thanks to you and Chief Redman. It's a pleasure to have you hosting with us today. This is a special Chief Chat episode. It's part of our In Recognition Of series. In honor of Veterans Day, we are saluting our nation's heroes. Our friends at the Navy Exchange, Marine Corps Exchange, Coast Guard Exchange, and the Defense Commissary Agency will be helping us host episodes of this special series throughout November this holiday season. We encourage you to remember your military exchanges and commissaries because it matters where you shop. Today's guest earned the Coast Guard Silver Life Saving Medal this summer for saving two lives off the coast of Long Island, New York in 2018. The medal is awarded to those who complete daring rescues, even when the recipient's own life is at risk. She is joined by her father, the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard. He's the, senior, the service's senior most enlisted member. Please help us welcome Petty Officer Second Class Victoria Vander Hayden and her father, 13th Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, Jason Vander Hayden. Yay! Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Thank you for having us. We're very excited to be with you. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for being here. Yes, yes, we are super excited. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Leave some love for Victoria and Jason there. And if you have any questions for those, them, we'll be reading those live throughout the broadcast. Now's a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following us, you should because we have guests lined up for Chief Chat through 2021 already. Awesome, awesome. It looks like we want we got another co-host trying to jump in too. Somebody, somebody's dog is, is <laughs> showing, us, showing us some love today. So we appreciate that. The more the, more the merrier. you. So uh, Master Chief Vander Hayden and Petty Officer Vander Hayden, it is truly an honor to have you both with us today. Uh, all of us at the military exchanges and the commissary appreciate your service to our and dedication to our great nation. And thank you for uh, making some time to talk to us today. Appreciate you. Thank you. I tell you, we, uh, I know Victoria and I both are frequent flyers in all the exchanges. I, we have uh, virtually every type of exchange here located in DC and the, the <laughs> Coast Guard Exchange in Mobile is one of the highest producing exchanges in the Coast Guard. Uh, we, we're grateful for, for all the, the employees and the, the team that make all the exchanges uh, available to all, all our folks. And, and so thank you. Thanks, Chief. All right. I just want to say morning again, Master Chief and Petty Officer Vander Hayden. Um, I wanted to know where you guys are joining us from and how are you faring in this pandemic? Thanks. Thanks, Chief. Uh, I'm joining you from Washington, D.C. in my office here at Coast Guard headquarters. Uh, I'm in Mobile, Alabama. Um, I am doing pretty good during the pandemic, I guess. You know, I'm doing what I can, spend a lot of time with my dog. So, <laughs> and we're, uh, you know, it, it, every day uh, we're, we're, we're analyzing the, the COVID situation for the workforce, you know, and the, as you know, Chief, and the, and the Coast Guard, the mission must go on. We have uh, exactly. 11 statutory missions, and, and many of them are peacetime missions that the nation still counts on us to perform. 
And so mm -hmm. what we're trying to do here is craft policy and, and guidance that, you know, solves more problems than it creates and, and uh, you know, try to make sure that our folks can uh, safely perform the missions and serve their country. And, and it's, it's probably about a third of our time is spent just, just on COVID and COVID related policies and direction. Awesome, thank you. Thank you both. So let's kick this off with a question for both of you. Um, what led each of you to a life of service and then how did you choose the Coast Guard? So I, uh, I, I was in Tallahassee, Florida, and I didn't really have enough money my, to, to go to college. My, my family wasn't able to, to pay for me to go to school, and I really wasn't um, really in tune with, with how to apply for student loans or anything, and uh, the military looked like a good service. Unfortunately, there was no Coast Guard recruiter in, in Tallahassee, Florida, so I was recruited to the Navy and uh, did all my work through the Navy, and then went over to Jacksonville to the Coast Guard recruiting in Jacksonville and kind of finished off the recruiting process. I, I joined to do four years. I was on the four-year program. I was going to use the GI Bill and go back to school and, and uh, after I got out of the Coast Guard, but I, I loved it. I love what, I love the mission. I love the job, and uh, I was at a good place, and, and uh, uh, I'd met my wife and gotten married, and, and wasn't really in a place where I really wanted to get out and added a lot of uncertainty to a, a new family. So I uh, decided to re-enlist and stay with it. And it's, it, it turned out pretty good and uh, very proud of, of uh, Victoria. And also, uh, uh, Victoria has a brother, our, our son, my wife and I's son is also in the Coast Guard and he serves as well. So, so did you know, like, cause I didn't, I think I wasn't really familiar with the military when I joined. And so, uh, I don't even know if I even knew what the Coast Guard was like coming as a 17 year old, you know, going into to that. So you said there was no Coast Guard recruiter. You went into the Navy. W w were you just like going in to go to the Navy and they were like, hey, we, or how did that work? So I, I, I wasn't sure. So I was planning to go into the Coast Guard and the Navy the, had an agreement with the Coast Guard that you could take your ASVAB there and go, you know, kind of work through some of the MEPS process there in Tallahassee. And, um, and, and I was always tracking to go in the Coast Guard, but the Navy was trying to entice me to come into the Navy. Uh, but I was like, I don't really want to get on one of them big ships and go to sea for a long period of time. And, and I didn't know the Coast Guard had ships. I thought the Coast Guard was all small boat stations and I was just joining to be a professional lifeguard. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go be a professional lifeguard. And, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't a particularly good swimmer, but I figured I'd, I'd get better, you know, in the Coast Guard. Um, but I now... <laughs> And now I know that if we're in the water, something's wrong. You know, we're not supposed to be, you know, we don't actually try to get into the water too often. Most of us, there's a few yeah. people who do, but most by and large, we don't, we don't want to be, we don't want to be in the water. So, uh, so I, I, uh, I, you know, I did, I, and then I got to the recruiting office and I saw these posters in the recruiting office, of these big ships. And I was like, what is that? When I, I, I don't want to do that, you know? And, <laughs> yeah. and, and so, uh, everything worked out, but, um, yeah, I didn't know much about the Coast Guard either. I just knew it was a service and and uh, it seemed cool at the time. Uh, so uh, the co contrasting that, Victoria knew all about the Coast Guard when she <laughs> yeah. joined. She made a very important decision when she joined. I did. Um, I grew up, you know, going to unit visits and I mean, I, he was on the Cheyenne, right, when I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. So I knew I've never not known the Coast Guard and uh, I ended up going on a unit visit when I was like 13 or 14 to Cape Disappointment. Um, and uh, there was a BM1 wolf at the time, took me out underway while he was giving his like, you know, talk to the unit. They, they, uh, they took me underway and he was driving and kind of like telling people what to do. And I knew I wanted to join the Coast Guard, but I mean, driving the boat and telling people, you know, I was like, I want to do that. So I've, uh, I've known for pretty much my whole life that that's what I was going to do. So I'm, I'm now a, a BOSA mate second class. So is my brother. And so, and um, he was there that day too. So could have been, could have been the same thing, but yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I'm trying to get my son, he's 21 now. And I've been working on him since he was 14. And he, <laughs> he's still trying to figure out life. I'm trying to get him to to kind of sway himself into the military because just because uh, I've been I've been blessed uh, my whole military career. I started off in the Marine Corps and then uh, I 
I transferred to the, I did some reserve time in the Air Force and then now, you know, active duty Air Force. So uh, Trey is listening. Uh, listen, Victoria, she's got, she's got the secret now. So. Uh, and if you don't like it, <laughs> four years. That's what I tell everybody, you know, it yeah. sets it off on a right path. And if you don't like it, it's just four years. So. And Chief, we're about to. I agree we're with about, that. <laughs> we're about to start offering some two-year enlistments. So we're going to oh, have wow. a, an opportunity to, to, to come in <laughs> two years if you want. Uh, and, and I know, I know. Uh, Chief Redmond's like, ah, I should have had that when I was in Dallas. But um, I wish. I yeah. really would. But we'll have an opportunity for folks if they want to come in and just try it out for for two years, see how it goes. And then uh, if they like it, they can stay. And if they don't, if they don't, then they're only committed for two years. Oh, yeah. That's I can see Trey. Awesome. In the, I can see Trey in the Coast Guard. Uh, I have, he's he's got to cut all the hair off his head. He got way too much hair. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you, you, so, so you mentioned uh, that... Uh, your, your son, uh, this is for a Master Chief. Uh, so you mentioned your son and your daughter both joined the Coast Guard. What, what does that mean to you? Like what, what did it mean to you for both of them to wanna kind of follow in dad's footsteps? Well, I, I, uh, I, I'm very, very proud. Uh, I want to, I want, I, I'm, what I'm hopeful is that that just sends a signal that, um, you know, they, 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 they thought, they, they saw that I enjoyed what I did. And, and if you love what you do, it's not like work. And I love what I I love what I do in the Coast Guard. I love coming to work every day. And uh, and, I, mom. And, and and my mom, my mother was all, uh, their mother. My wife was also in the Coast Guard. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, oh. so that's the family they, business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure. So they uh, they and then my wife's brother, her he was also in the Coast Guard. So um, but it's a uh, it's just it was uh, you know I my my thought is is that. You know, we I did something right, and they they were they saw that it was um, good work, and that you can love what you do, and and that's what they uh, they wanted for themselves. Uh, it was my son wasn't convinced he was going to join the Coast Guard. It was like his senior year. That's when he kind of said, "Oh, I think I want to go on the Coast Guard." Uh, and but Victoria had been saying that ever since she got off that boat in Cape Disappointment that she wanted to join the Coast Guard. So um, it, it it is. Uh, made me very makes me very proud. Uh, I can tell you that you know Victoria uh, got to got to brief a four star admiral a couple days ago, and uh, you know you don't just get to do that very often. So I mean it's just it's just neat to to see them and to be able to enjoy them uh, being successful. And that you, you know what I told them was, you know you can join you can do something else, and I can just be a cheerleader. Or you can stand on my shoulder. You can join the Coast Guard and then stand on my shoulders and let, and use the knowledge that that from our time together and and my experience to help you and to help you grow faster in the organization and to you know to get ahead. Um, I, not that I go down and like I don't pull. I don't. I it, I try not to do favors for them necessarily. I, I like them to earn it themselves. But it, there is some. You know, they did grow up with it, so they know. Um, they know what they're in. They, they kind of have a head start, if you will. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead, Victoria. What were you saying? Oh, no, nothing, nothing. Okay. Thank you, Master Chief. So, this question is going to be for uh, Petty Officer Vander Hayden. Um, can you take us back to July 24, 2018? Um, what happened that night? Um, yeah, that was uh, two years now over. Um, oh. I uh, I was kind of new to Long Island and I had just gotten done with the gym and I uh, wanted to go check out Fire Island, the beach. Um, I worked on the sound side uh, of Long Island, uh, the Long Island mm -hmm. Sound. So I hadn't really seen the ocean side much. And so I was walking on the beach. Um, it was, it was, pretty it was a good night and uh but the wind had really picked up and so and the waves were like you know five six seven feet and it was like a washing machine out there and that's I was just kind of sitting watching the waves um and I noticed two guys in the water and a third guy like standing on the beach and I, I just kind of was watching them because I definitely wouldn't have been in the water. I mean, there were signs saying, you know, no lifeguard present, red flags, no swimming, you know. Um, it was just, it was really bad weather. 
And uh, so people were walking the beach and uh, they just started yelling and you could tell that it wasn't, uh, it didn't sound good. I don't, it was in Spanish. I don't, I don't, I don't speak Spanish. I wish I did, but um, so I kind of slowly walked down, was watching them and they were getting pulled further and further out. And uh, it was, it was starting to become clear that they were uh, not in a good situation. Um, and so I stopped, there was a, there were people stopped on the beach watching cause they were yelling to the man on the beach. And I asked the guy standing next to me, if he knew what they were saying, he said they were saying, help me in Spanish. And, uh, for a second, I'm like, does everyone know that? You know? <laughs> so, um, but so I took my sweatshirt off and I took my shoes off cause, um, I mean, there was no lifeguard and uh, everyone else was, you know, fully dressed. I don't think no one else was getting in the water. So I asked them to call 911 and uh, I was actually right across the street from the Coast Guard base, uh, Fire Island Coast Guard station. And uh, I said to call them because, you know, maybe they could get out there and pick them up too. But uh, so I started swimming. Um, I wasn't used to, as soon as you get in the water, it's a drop off. There's no, I'm used to Florida or Alabama where you can pretty much walk like a half mile until you, oh, right. you know, yeah. so um, it was a drop off and I was, uh, but um, so I started swimming out to him and the current actually pulled me out pretty quick. So I got to save a little energy on that, but um, I swam past the first guy and he seemed, he was kind of like, what the heck? Um, <laughs> so I swam to the second guy. He was about like 60, 75 yards out. And uh, I, I got to him and he was really like, couldn't keep his head above water. The waves were, I mean, there was like no time between sets. It was like, it was, it was like a washing machine. And so he just was getting pummeled and he was panicking and people just don't know what, you lose all sense of like rationality when you're, when you're panicking. So he was, I, I, I have a, a fat, dog my labrador right here and i'm used to i'm used to him swimming out to me and propping him up on my knee and then doing like an egg beater with my other leg so i tried to do that with him and i was like hey you know calm down calm down it's gonna be okay catch your breath and um so that actually did pretty well he calmed down and uh, i got him to start swimming with me and i was i was kind of like pushing him from behind trying to get him to swim uh down the waves and uh, we made it to the second guy and I tried to do the same thing that I did with the first guy, prop him up on my knee. But um, that's when uh, I think the, the first guy kind of wanted to uh, like a second chance of that too. So then I had both of them climbing on me <laughs> at the same time. Um, and that was, that was kind of scary. Um, I, uh, yeah, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't catch my breath for a minute there. And, and it was, uh, I, I just, I didn't know, I didn't, they didn't speak English. I didn't speak Spanish. I didn't know how to, how to get through to them that it was gonna be okay. We all just needed to calm down. Um, and so uh, finally, I kind of like pushed the one guy and got the second guy up and propped him up, calmed him down. And uh, it was getting dark too. And I, I was really disoriented at that point because I had been underwater and I didn't know which I couldn't see the shore. <laughs> I, I, Long Island is like a very long, uh, uh, thin kind of like island, obviously, but um, there weren't lights or anything. So I couldn't really tell where I was going. And then, so I waited over the waves and I finally saw the tip of the, the firehouse. And so I, or the lighthouse. So I started swimming towards that direction and uh, pushing them, pulling, pushing, pulling, and then, uh, I finally saw lights from like uh, ambulance lights and fire fire truck lights, and that was that was awesome. I that was that was cool because it was getting dark. It was it was dark, and and uh, I felt like we had been swimming forever, and so I knew that they were right there, and uh, still couldn't see the beach. That's that's what was killing me. So I'm swimming, and finally I remember that last stroke and having my knee hit the sand where that like come up was on the on the beach and that was like the best feeling and so I knew that if I just pulled them we all like hit the beach at the same time and like got pushed up and we were just like laying there exhausted and uh people were like 
you know, clapping and they were all, they were all, thank you. Thank you. You know, and, uh, God bless you. And it was, it was, it was awesome. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the ambulance checked him out and I had to, the police were there and they, they like took my statement. And, uh, I remember calling my officer in charge, um, uh, now master chief Martinez. And I was like, Hey, uh, I know you're on leave. I just want to let you know I had to make a police report, like a witness statement kind of thing. I'm not in trouble. And he's like, okay, I trust yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so uh, they, so I went, I, I wanted to get, I was soaking wet. There was a reason I was at the gym before. I'm in a sports bra. People are like taking, <laughs> taking pictures. I'm like, I'm cold. I want to, I want to get out of here. So I left and, uh, and they, I guess my dad, he, my officer in charge was actually with my my dad at the time in DC for something, right? Yes. And uh, they, I guess the police had called Station Fire Island and were trying to find out like who I who I was, and they they called Sector Long Coast Guard Sector Long Island Sound called the said I was the ghost coastie for a week, and uh, <laughs> and Master Chief Martinez actually is is the driving factor behind this award and everything. Cause he made sure that they knew that it was, that it was me, which was really cool. So, uh, so did, did, you, did you have, did you have any like previous like lifeguard experience or? Um, I was a junior lifeguard when I was like 12 in Petaluma at the training center. <laughs> but otherwise, I just, I, I, my parents taught me how to swim very young. I really, really enjoy being in the water. I, I free dive. Um, do a little bit of surfing. I'm, 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 I'm just grew up around the water and it's, a, I know how to treat undercurrents and, and, and undertoes and stuff like that. So. That's awesome, man. That's super awesome. Really awesome. All that from our mother, not from me. Yeah. My, mom, <laughs> <laughs> my mom's the dolphin trainer. Who's like, you know, Oh, the water. <laughs> so. Wow. That's an incredible story, Victoria. So you, you put these men's lives ahead of your own that night. Um, did you have any hesitation? Did you, did you think about hesitating or what might happen if you did or did not go into the water? Um, I, I don't, I honestly, there wasn't really a thought process beforehand. I, I feel like I, I, I feel like the chief Keen, she was on here earlier. I remember telling her, I feel like I kind of blacked out from between telling them to call 911 and like taking my sweatshirt off and just being in the water. But I also think that that's kind of why everyone joins the Coast Guard or at least, you know, the military is because we, it's not, it's not like you don't second guess it. That's why we're, we're, there's nothing like pulling someone out of the water. There's nothing like uh, uh, saving someone. So I feel like that, not necessarily an adrenaline rush, but that like, you know, chase to do that, that's what we live for and work for. And I think that that's, so no, I don't think there's, I, I didn't hesitate, but I don't think anyone would hesitate in my position. Um, yeah. At least people that I, I know and work with every day. So I think that- Yeah, we, we, um, we recently had, uh, uh, like I said, in this, in recognition of series, we've had some Medal of Honor recipients on the show and, they, they are explaining things exactly the way you're explaining it, right? Like, like there's no hesitation. We just had a, we just had a Colonel Jack Jacobs on there and he, and he, he went in there and he, he put his life on the line for a, a bunch of people. And um, who was, Flo uh, uh, then we had a uh, Captain uh, Flo Groberg. Mm -hmm. uh, he literally tackled a suicide bomber to, to save 20, 28 people or 24 wow. people, four, four end up, um, you know, passing, but, um, but he, he said the exact same thing. There's no hesitation. You just do, you just go, you've been trained. You've, uh, they give you the confidence to do it and you just do it. So that's, man, that's commendable. That's freaking awesome to hear your story. Um, I wouldn't, I would not, I, I would not even come remotely close to comparing myself to anything like that. That's incredible. Um, wow. Uh, but, but thank you. Thank you. But I, I cannot, that is, there's, but, but if, you, but if you if you really She's put so it in perspective, but, but no, but if you put if you put it in perspective, you you looked at a condition that's not favorable mm -hmm. for anybody to be out there in the water, including yourself, and you jumped in that water to go save those people, man. So yes, you can 
th there is a comparison there. There is a there is a parallel to to all that stuff because it it doesn't matter if it's water or if it's a suicide bomber or whatever the case may be. We we you know use act off instinct. So that's that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And so for Master Chief uh, Vander Hayden, oh man, I, I'm super proud of your daughter. And I, you know, I, I just met her five minutes ago. So, so, exactly. so I, I can't imagine Same. how proud you are of her. Uh, so kind of what went through your mind when you're hearing the story? Uh, even I, I even see you on the Zoom link listening to her story and I can just tell it, it, it hits you, right? And so, oh, yeah. My heart's beating faster just listening to her when she tells that story. I just I get so worried and so nervous to say that could have been it that could have been the end and uh uh so when she called me so she she's laying there kind of out of breath uh all wet and she calls me and says hey uh i just want to let you know uh, you know I, i'm okay but you know i just had this thing happen and, and i was like what did you do why you know why would you go in you know and she's like nobody yeah. else is going i you know i didn't feel like you know i had a chance a choice and and uh so i i was uh I, you know i I got, I, I'm very, very proud of her. Um, I would ask her not to do anything like that again. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, I, um, it is, uh, it, it does, it makes you so proud as a parent to, to see that your, uh, your child just, just, you know, put their own life uh, uh, ahead of other, put others ahead of their, you know, put their own life behind others and, and really, you know, um, do what it takes to save people no matter what and and i i just uh i just incredibly proud of her and and uh, uh you know i, I get excited. it makes me nervous every time i hear that story I'll, i don't think i'll ever get used to her telling that story wow so victoria can you tell us about the day you received the silver life-saving medal um, yeah, I, uh, that was not too long ago, actually. It was, uh, maybe three or four months ago, I think. Um, it was, it was great. My parents got to fly in. Um, we had the district admiral, Admiral Nato come out, which was, and he presented it. And, uh, uh, my commanding officer at sector, uh, Mobile, Captain Allen was there. It was, it was great. I had, I had, uh, my boyfriend got to come, friends and family. It was, it was good. It was good. Social distance. That's, that was the, it was, it was, it was, it was during the pandemic and we weren't sure if we were going to do it, but uh, we, um, Fort Whiting let us use their, their area and, and we had six feet apart, everybody. It was great. And uh, it was great. Um, I, it was the first time I, I actually got to hear the citation. Um, uh, a Lieutenant Chung uh, wrote it up two years ago and uh, I, I had not heard it. So it was, and I, I, I hadn't really told, I moved from New York to Alabama. No one in Alabama knew the story, anyone that I worked with. It was like Long Island news kind of thing. And so it was, it was interesting to hear the story again because I hadn't told it to, in, in like two years. And, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was really cool to get recognized like that. Um, yeah. I have a question. Did your, did your dad or mom tear up? Cause I mean, I'm just using a emotional intelligence right now to keep <laughs> keep mind control right now i don't know if i was there i don't think if i was a parent i probably would have lost it that day <laughs> my mom my mom is, was pretty emotional um yeah. I, i've only seen my dad cry about twice but uh <laughs> that, he has a, he has I, a low tear duck count he, yeah. he, does. <laughs> he, does, he does but uh i always i always know i always know when he's proud so it was, but yeah, my mom was kind of a mess. <laughs> yeah. So, so she was. I agree with that. <laughs> I probably would have been too. Vic, Victoria was only the second um, Coast Guard woman to receive, ever receive the, the Silver Life Saving Medal. And the irony is, is the first woman to receive the, the Silver Life Saving Medal in the Coast Guard is one of Victoria's mentors. She knows her, uh, she, she's a, a chief warrant officer. Uh, Beth Slade, she was the first woman to, to, to receive that medal. And I, I presented it to her. And I also got to be there to present my daughter, uh, the Silver Life Saving Medal. So um, I just luck, just sheer luck of the draw. I got, I got to be there for both of them. And, and if Victoria grows up to be, or grows up, if Victoria continues <laughs> her career uh, and, 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 and follows in the footsteps of, of her mentor, Beth Slade, that would be a a wonderful, a wonderful career to, to, 
she could be very it's like proud history in the making here. Yeah. No, that's, <laughs> that's wow. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, she's she's uh she's definitely a uh I can't swear. She's definitely a badass woman, but I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually met her in when I was in high school. So it was, it was, uh, and I didn't know her story back then. And I didn't know that she was the first female until I found out that I was the second. So hearing, hearing all of that was, was absolutely, she's, she's a huge role model of mine. Just, just trying to follow whatever she's done, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, she has nice. to be super proud. Was she? Did she get the chance to be there too, or? Uh, she didn't. I we actually only got to have. I think there was only fifteen people there. It was. Uh, it was. It was very small. Um, but she did. I. I got to um, speak with her. She congratulated me. It was. It was nice. So. Awesome. So I got a question for uh, both of you. So, uh, what advice would you give young people like Trey? <laughs> what we'll say to young people at Ocom Trey? <laughs> uh, well, considering a life of service, uh, and, and also kind of a follow on question, what opportunities does the Coast Guard offer? But first question is, you know, what, what do you, what would you say coming in? I know Chief Redmond, she's a recruiter, so she already got the spiel probably down packed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Chief, I'll take you know, the, I'll take the what I tell young people because I am, I try and talk people into the Coast Guard a lot. Um, but uh, I, my two younger cousins just went to uh, boot camp and, and they, they are interested in, in all that the Coast Guard could offer. But I like to tell people that um, it's, it's what I said, it's, it's four years. And you, I was 18 when I joined and I was not the same person I was when I went to boot camp that I came out and I'm still not the same person I was then and, and I feel like it really matures you and even for the first it teaches you things life lessons you know respect that I think everyone should have in life and even if you don't want to make a career out of it you're getting those you know morals and values and also you know life lessons and you're taking you know benefits out of it as well but if you do four years or you do you know what do you have 34 years dad or you do that much i mean i feel like there's something that you can get out of it that will only benefit you in the end and that's you know and you get to hang out on a boat or a helicopter with your friends all day and then you know, <laughs> that's it and then if i still don't have you <laughs> so, so I, I i think that um you know being a part of something bigger than yourself being a part of a team you, 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 you will develop friendships and partnerships with folks that you'll maintain the rest of your life, even when you're not stationed together. It is, uh, you're, you're serving your country and you're making a difference. Every, when you go to work every day, you are making a difference uh, in, for the country. And in, no matter what service you're in, no matter what branch, you can, you are, you are just, you're, you're giving back and it's a sense of pride you don't feel like you're just going to work every day to work for a paycheck. You feel like you're going to work every day to work for a cause. And, and, and it's not, it's not evident every single day, but there are days like you never know what, what you, when you go to work that day, you never know what's going to happen. And that could be the day where your commitment and your, your, your service makes the difference for the country. Uh, and uh, I, 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 you just can't, you can't get that in the civilian sector. It's it, you can try. And, and I let me just say this too. I want to compliment all our civilian employees that don't necessarily put a uniform on, but still come to work every day and commit the same level of a service. You know, care about their country just as much, although they're wearing a suit and tie or ser serving as a civilian. Uh, you know, their contribution means uh, means a lot too. But. For those people who go to boot camp, who enlist or go to the academy, and uh, and serve as the officer or enlisted, it's just a it is it, a feeling like no other uh, no other job that you could have in the civilian world, uh, not working for the military. Yeah, and and, and so the, the the kind of the the thing that I've heard from most of the folks that I know in the military is they come on with that four year plan. So like Mass Chief, you had your four year plan. 
right. where you you step off in boot camp and 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 for me in the Marine Corps, I stepped on those yellow footprints and I knew that I was not doing a day over four years in the military. I knew at that point. <laughs> but the thing is, is you you uh, you understand what you're doing uh, after you've been in for a little bit of you know a couple of years. You understand that you know what this 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 is like a family that a lot of people that are coming in the military don't have a family or or have a, a dysfunctional family or whatever the case may be. And so not to say military has dysfunctional family too. It's 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 the same, but but just knowing that you got people from all these different walks of life that that will literally jump in the water and, and go save you. You know, you just, you know, th there's nothing like that in, in the world, I think, in my personal opinion. I, I agree with you. You said it I, well. Absolutely. So, Terrific advice um, and feedback, you guys. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, Want to take a second and pause to look at the Facebook live feed and the questions and comments that are that are coming in. Lots of people tuning in from all over the world saying thank you. Um, thank you for your service. Thanks for joining, things like that. Um, I, I do want to read this one comment because I think it really just sums up all of the rest of the comments. It's from Judd. He says, the Vander Haydens are an amazing example of family serving family. Thank you, Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, Jason Vander Hayden, and Petty Officer Second Class, Victoria Vander Hayden. We are a better nation due to your family's incredible service. Wow. Wow. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Thank you. Wow. That was a great comment. So that kind of sums up. And we do have one question. Cassie is asking, she says, joining from Petersburg, Illinois. Silly question. Do you have to live on the water to be in the Coast Guard? So uh, I'll, I'll take that. We have Coast Guard all over. We have Coast Guard in Topeka, Kansas. We have Coast Guard in Peoria, Illinois. We have Coast Guard in St. Louis. We have Coast Guard in Minnesota. Iowa, yeah, Oklahoma, Arkansas. We any any uh, a lake or a navigable water body of water that crosses state lines, uh, Burlington, Vermont, for example, we have Coast Guard Station. We have Lake Lake Tahoe. Uh, we have Coast Guard Station at Lake Tahoe. Um, we we run Coast Guard in Lake Havasu. We we have Coast Guard all over the not just the United States but also in Guam and Japan and Singapore over in in Europe. Um, we, uh, we have Coast Guard all over the place uh, that, uh, um, so you do not need to be near, you don't necessarily, you do not need to be near the water. And we, we recruit uh, folks from the heartland of America, at, you know, non, you know, landlocked states all the time. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's just a great experience, Cassie. I, I, I hope you consider, if you're thinking about the Coast Guard, Cassie, I hope you, uh, I'm not sure where Petersburg, Illinois is, but I, I, I hope you consider contacting a recruiter. Excellent, thank you. All right, Master Chief, before we say goodbye, do you have any uh, parting words for our viewers? Uh, yeah, you know, thank you for all of you that tuned in. Uh, thank you, as you know, your patronage to the, to the military exchanges. Uh, is reinvested back into in, into the service and into the morale committees and uh, does a lot for us. I, I, I'm grateful for all of you who who work for the exchange system and, and also patronize the, the exchange system and 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 the commissaries. Um, you know, it's an honor to serve in the Coast Guard. We we are, uh, you know, the Coast Guard has a you know, like I said earlier, 11 statutory missions. That many of them are peacetime, and we are hiring. We we would love to have. Uh, more folks join in the Coast Guard. So um, please consider that. I, I do want to say thank you to Victoria, my daughter. Very proud of you. I want to publicly tell everybody how proud I am of you and your service. Keep up the good work. And, uh, you know, for all the men and women serving in the Coast Guard and you, Chief Redman, especially, I, uh, I want to say thank you. And Chief, you've done a lot to keep our service ready, relevant, responsive. And I, I want to thank you for your service. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you next time I'm down in Chesapeake. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you, Chief. So yeah, Victoria, you wanna you wanna say something, some parting words? Uh thanks for taking the time <laughs> to listen to this and uh it means a lot. Thanks, Dad, for taking the time to uh be a part of it. Thank you, Chief and uh Chief Chat and uh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Awesome, awesome. So, um, Master Chief Vander Hayden and Petty Officer Vander Hayden, thank you so much for being with us today uh, and sharing your life of service. Uh, you know, Petty Officer Vander Hayden, you have an amazing story, and I'm glad we got a chance to get some more people uh, to, to know what you've done. And, and we thank you for, uh, you know, putting your life on the line for others. And so that's just, uh, that, that's, that, that's what every human being, in my opinion, should should think about. I know dad probably has a different opinion on that, <laughs> that now, <laughs> but, but, but I understand where he's coming from, from a father, especially father. Yeah, that's just, um, that, that's, that's something that, you know, even though he's got a low tear duct count, uh, he, he definitely, I can tell when you're telling the story, you know, his head started getting red and stuff. So he, he, he's, it, it hits him in the fields. It definitely hits him in the fields. You just <laughs> called him out, Chief. You just uh, called him out. Right. He was right. He was right. He's a he's very <laughs> Yes. So this this chat, this chat means a, a lot to our service members and their families and the veterans. Like I said, it's it's always good to share good stories and and positive stories because uh, there's a lot of craziness going on in the world. A lot of negative crap that that you know we we see on a regular basis. So hearing a story like this just it, it just made my day. So uh, we appreciate you and all that you've done to you know defend our great nation and thank you very much. Uh, if you can stay on the live just a couple seconds, uh, I got to get some information from you all. But okay. uh, thank you. We had, we, thank you it was Chief. a great chat. Thank y'all so much. Uh, Chief yeah. Chat out. <laughs>